Welcome into the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Today's title is about managing menopause and hormones, finding ways that we can reduce those symptoms. Today, we have a special guest. Her name is Teresa Nilsson. She is a competitor with figure bodybuilding for over 15 years, where she took a gold and silver medal home. She is now 51 years old, and she struggled with her menopause for over 10 years. And she's going to come in and help us really understand the managing side of it, help us so that we don't have to go through all those mistakes, and hopefully take one thing away from today's podcast that can help us be able to manage it a lot better. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Welcome in, Teresa. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I had a previous conversation with her that blew me out of the water. I was just, we were at 4th of July sitting there on the side of the street and met each other for the first time. And she takes me through this entire journey that she went through. And wow, did I say, I was like, immediately I need to do an interview with you because I knew the information that she had is so valuable, especially if you've struggled with it for over 10 years. Yeah. So um, let's go right into it. So um, my first question I have for you is what did you not know about menopause? And then what would you say you know now? Like what was the big kind of shift for you? I would say I would say what I didn't know is how connected the brain, the thyroid and the ovaries um, are all connected together as one. And if one goes out of sync, you have like just the cluster of a tornado going on in your body. So once I connected all of those without the help of the doctor myself, then I was able to manage the menopause a lot better. There's no cure for it, but you can manage it and start to feel better about yourself. Yeah, I love that you look at it in more of a holistic approach. That's what we're all about, Yeah, is really looking at everything as a full picture. And also I like that you mentioned the word balance earlier. I thought that was so great. So what is balance when you think of that word? How does that kind of tie into what menopause and everything is? The balance is, uh, it, honestly, it's the sleep, it's the diet. I don't wanna say diet, but it's the nutrition the structure. Yeah, the nutrition, Um, and then trying to exercise if you can get that in, and just fighting the fatigue. Because I think fatigue is the number one thing that probably women struggle with the most and that doctors just don't understand. So if you can get those all in sync, um, as well as the hormones as well, then then you're on a a better path than what you were to begin with. And the path gets a little bit clearer, you know, as you walk, but it's 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 a long path for sure. And you have to be really diligent, um, really di- diligent with all of those and patience. You have to have lots of patience. You mentioned the hot sweats at night. Um, tell me a little bit more about that, how that journey was for you and how you... Yeah, the night sweats were, I would start off probably in the very beginning in my early 40s where I would wake up in the middle of the night just drenched. Uh, I'd have to change the bed sheets, just completely drenched. And that was probably if I would have had the right doctors or if I would have even was able to connect the two, didn't even know perial menopause existed. That That's pre-menopause. If I would have even known that word, it probably would have helped me a lot quicker to understand what's going on with my body. But even then it was like, do I have cancer? Like, do I have diabetes? Like, where are these so running all these tests? And the doctors aren't even sure what that is either. And um, taking all sorts of, you know, those uh, health herbs to try and alleviate the night sweats and understanding that the night sweats come on certain days of your cycle. So you might not have them on day one to day 15, but you sure are going to have them day 15 to day 28. That is when the the night sweats are going to be the most intense and uh, probably the worst. And if women can understand that where they can cycle, get an app on their phone and download that app and put in when was my last period, it will tell you exactly, okay, day 15 to 16, I should start my night sweats. Mm -hmm. Not to say that day one to 15, they're not going to be intense, but they're not going to be as bad. So they're going to be a little bit lighter or you might not even have them then. But yeah, the, I would say the night sweats were, were the first trigger for sure. But what that reminds me of, because I've done a lot of research on just the cycle and there's four different phases of the cycle. And so what that sounds like to me is that when you're in a certain stage of that cycle could be like luteal phase, that that's when the 
yeah. symptoms can occur. And for some women, maybe they don't even get those. Maybe their symptoms yeah. are different, right? And so it's really different for everyone. And and what I liked is that you mentioned, I mean, you're bringing it up a couple of times that you've gone through doctors to doctors. Tell me about your experience of what that was like and how you were able to... Yeah, the doctors are very... They're Even the endocrinologists, I've been to endocrinologists, they're just not trained to deal with hormones. And I don't know why. Maybe some are a little bit better than others, but I've yet to come across one that um, can really dial into what your hormones are doing. You have to just be pro advocate with yourself. And the other thing I learned is you're going to go through a slew of doctors and that is okay because sometimes one doctor might be okay for a few months and then they're not listening to you anymore. They get maybe a little bit I don't want to say lazy, but they get a little bit, this is my way. Who are you to tell me? I'm the doctor. You're the patient. I'm the one with the certificate. But they're not the one sleeping with you beside the bed fan, eating at four in the morning because you're hungry, right? Because you know if you're hungry with night sweats and you have fatigue, your hormones are imbalanced. Like there's something wrong with you. And you know that. It's the same as being pregnant. You know when you're pregnant because you're eating peanut butter on fish. Why are you doing that? Because your (laughs) hormones aren't balanced anymore because you're busy making a baby. Well, the same thing is with menopause. Your hormones aren't going to be balanced because, well, they're taking away the baby phase. You're not going to make a baby anymore. So the doctor journey is hard and long, and you have to just be prepared to go through lots of different doctors and go in there with the knowledge. Like they tell you not to Google anything. I say Google it because sometimes it does help. And sometimes you have to Google things in order to try new things that they don't know anything about or they don't, a lot of them don't like, um, don't, you know, they don't want you to take supplements. They just want you to take the drugs. So they don't want you to take any herbs or anything like that. They, They don't believe in the holistic medicine, but I'm telling you, you need both. Or sometimes you just need, sometimes you just need holistic for six months and then you have to the next six months you have to go on the drugs or you have to stay on the drugs and just it honestly it's just listening to your body and not sort of listening to the doctors I wouldn't say not listen to the doctors but they really rely on blood work and blood work it, it's there to help but it's it, you have to listen to your body because my blood work even said there was a point where it it said that uh my thyroid was fine, but it wasn't fine. Even though the blood work said it was fine, you can still, you know, be hypothyroid or hyperthyroidism without the blood work showing it. But you, if you're like gaining weight, night sweats, you know, hungry, those can all be thyroid issues as well. So like I said, you have to really, um, I even went to Mexico and got Citamel T3 to take and brought it back to Canada because I couldn't get a doctor to listen to me when I knew it was my thyroid that was causing me my tr- my problems. Um, and just like my throat, my voice has changed. I used to have a squeakier voice. Now I have a deeper voice. That's from hypothyroidism. It's completely changed like um, everything about me when it comes to hypo. And I believe what I've read and, and what I've gone through is that when you're estrogen dominant, the estrogen dominance can shut down your thyroid. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. I want to go into that. You really talked a lot about estrogen dominance, which I'm really excited. That goes and in, leads into our next topic. But you were mentioning tests that before I go to the next topic is um, you were going through tests of like you mentioned, there's blood work, but then you were telling me that there's hair. So DNA, there's also yeah. uh, you named you a few saliva. Others. And honestly, I would do I would do all three. You have to do saliva, hair and blood. And the reason why you have to do all three is because um, all three tell you a different story what's going on in your body. So because the the blood, sometimes your hormones will be in the blood, but then other hormones will be in the hair and the saliva. So to get a full panel, you need to do all three. And you have to go to a compounding pharmacy to get the... um, Uh, hair and the saliva kits. They're kind of expensive, but it's worth it. And you're worth it too. So you want to do all three. The doctor will do the blood. Lots of doctors don't believe in the hair and the saliva. So you do have to find a doctor that is more the holistic and then do the general, well, I shouldn't say general, but do an endocrinologist or do a doctor that specializes in hormones 
and then do the holistic doctors. You might need three doctors. It just depends on what's going on with your body. Again, that goes back to what you first said of more of a holistic approach where you're really looking at this thing with a full picture Oh yeah. rather than just going at it with one way. So I really love, again, that you're doing that. So this leads me into the next one. As you're talking about estrogen dominance, you talked a lot about the menopause belly. And I'm going to get this elephant out yeah. of the room because this is the biggest one that women talk to me about. Yeah. So talk to me about the menopause belly, where that stems from and what are ways that we can help. The menopause belly basically, and you can look at any woman, you know, age 40 to age 50 and well past 50, but if they have those skinny legs, but then they just have this huge belly and hips, a lot of that is just, is, is just estrogen. That's, that's what it is. And, um, and it, it's a hard one to get rid of for sure. Uh, a, a good indicator of that too is insulin resistance. That is another thing where, um, your insulin is a hormone and it's becoming resistant. So it's not making the right glucose into your blood sugar. So which can lead to diabetes. So a lot of women that might have the estrogen dominance will have the insulin resistance. And that's a tough one to really conquer. Let me ask you a question on this one. This is something I teach in my coaching that as far as the way the estrogen or sorry, the way the insulin, from my understanding, is that your blood levels is about a hundred that it wants to be at. Yep. And when you eat and let's say if you eat with just, let's say, you know, coffee and sugar, then there's no fiber or protein in that. So what it does is it spikes the sugar anytime you're just having a standalone carbohydrate or sugar. Yep. And then what happens is your pancreas releases the insulin. And so then it goes into this really high spikes. And so what I hear, a lot of women come to me and they're like, I'm eating maybe one, two times a day. And when they are eating, it's a very high carb or high, something that turns really quickly into sugar. Yeah. So they're on this roller coaster of their insulin, which then creates that insulin resistance, which then creates that la the, eventually at some point, the insulin and the pancreas are like, you're wearing me out. And so the extra blood sugar now goes into the adipose tissue and that's kind of where the stomach starts to grow. And so yep. one way that and you mentioned this, that when we balance out the blood sugar with the fiber and the protein in each one of those meals, it helps keep us along more of that hundred that our body wants to be at. But you also mentioned, you told me that fiber can actually help break down that yep. estrogen. So go yep. into that a little bit. So honestly, if you're going to have good eating habits, you should eat quite a bit in the day. I don't want to say, but you want to make sure you have protein and fiber. So you want to make sure, and even have fiber drinks, so you can get Metamucil, but yeah, the, the fiber helps expel the extra estrogen. I mean, it's not going to get rid of all of it. Obviously you're going to have to, you're going to have to like balance your progesterone, see where your progesterone level is, see where your testosterone level is. You might have to take progesterone cream or pills, um, to help balance that to get rid of that estrogen. But, um, but yeah, the fiber, you want to make sure you have fiber with protein like you do and fibers, vegetables, oatmeal, really. And just try and get rid of the carbs. There's some healthy carbs you can have, but seriously, like the carbs are bad for estrogen. Like it's, it's, and I'm guilty of it too. Like if I go on a holiday or something, like I got back from Dollywood, I didn't feel as good because I had a lot of carbs when I was there with my daughter. And I really paid for it. I, I, I could just tell like the night sweats came back, waking up in the night. Um, so diet really, I don't like to say diet nutrition. because nutrition, diet is just, it, it's a, it's a word I don't to use fail. that word. Yeah. Nutrition, good eating habits or well eating habits. You just have to stay focused with that. And like I said, I can't focus enough on the protein and the fiber. You have to have those two on every single meal. And the insulin resistance too is you don't want to starve yourself. Cause that's going to make it spike and go up and down. So you want to make sure you eat. Everybody is their own, you know, you can adjust your own body the way you want to, but I try and honestly eat every three hours. And even if it's just like a handful of almonds or a spoonful of peanut butter and then um, some carrot sticks or something like that, just, and some oatmeal, like a little cup of oatmeal just to get the fiber going. And even when I'm busy, I do the, I cheat and I do the Metamucil, whatever. Milk thistle is a great one. Get on the milk thistle. Um, milk thistle what? Like milk th thistle tea? Uh, you could do tea, you can do liquid, or you can do pill form. Okay. So it's, and it's, that helps break down that extra estrogen? It'll, it'll be good. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it'll, it'll help you uh, have a bowel movement. The other one that is really important that every woman should take is spirolactin. 
spirolactin, take five of those and you will have two or three bowel movements in a day. And it's a green, little green pills. You can get them on Amazon, a great big pack, super cheap. Um, but yeah, take the spirolactin girls, take it. It is a godsend. Um, uh, I will get all those uh, links and things like that as far as supplements and put yeah. that down below for everybody. So any other supplements that you can think of that would be helpful that helped you during your journey? Um, the other one that I take is magnesium, um, magnesium citrates really good. Um, I also take an iron. You should always take iron. You just should. We're always going to be, they, uh, when we have babies, when we're producing babies, they put us on iron. I believe when you're in menopause. It's the reverse. You should also go on iron. Um, B vitamins for sure. Um, uh, zinc. Uh, what else? Uh, vitamin D for sure. Um, vitamin C. Um, yeah. And what else can I think of? I can give you the list of everything that I have. So that's what you were telling me earlier that vitamins are just so important. I think because as we get older, our bodies just aren't making enough and we're not we're busy. We're probably not eating properly as well. Um, so if you don't have the right vitamin Bs, you're going to be tired. Um, vitamin D2, you're going to have some fatigue. Like they want you to go out in the sun uh, for the vitamin D just to feel, just, just to feel good. So you should, you should take that. They also help with the hormones as well, just to speed up and get the hormones working. Yeah, I'm so grateful that everything we've been teaching for the last 10 years is, is exactly this. That we're the program is all about building your lean muscle, which yeah. I love that you're a bodybuilder and you've been doing figure for 15 years. Yeah. I got really excited when you came in here because you look freaking amazing and um, also have gone through a hellish journey for 10 years yeah. of it. Do you have a lot of substance behind like what you had to go through? Um, so the other question I have for you as far as workouts for these women that, you know, a lot of them are gravitating towards either nothing at all or possibly just treadmills. What's yeah. your recommendation? Treadmills, you know what, ladies, just treadmill is not your friend. It's your buddy, but it's not your friend. Just treat it as a buddy. Weight train. You got to weight train. Whether you like it or not, you have to lift the weights. Lifting the weights is what's going to burn whatever you want to burn off and create the muscle. You want to create the muscle to burn the fat. Okay. I need to high five her right now. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Exactly. And the treadmill is your buddy. Do 10, 15 minutes before or after. Do it on an empty stomach if you can. Not everybody has a treadmill at their house. So just treat it as a buddy, but don't get on there and just think you have to do 45 minutes and an hour. It's just, it's counterproductive as to what you're doing. You're just spiking your insulin resistance even worse than what it was before you got there. And then the rest of the day is just going to be crap because of it. So the weight, the weights is what's going to make you feel good. And you have to start. And even if you don't want to do dumbbells, barbells, just stick to machines, whatever, do whatever. If you just want to stick to machines, that's fine. If that's the easiest route for you, God bless you, but at least you're doing it. Get on there and do the machines for sure. Yeah, my entire world flipped for me uh, probably about 10 years ago when I started picking up weights. And it's awkward at first when you first get into it, but um, here at Booty Bands, uh, we really focus on actually helping women with their form. And that's what we sell is booty bands and barbells. Yeah. That's our equipment. And we pride ourselves in really helping those that don't know what they're doing to actually start feeling confident. And the power and the, the uh, confidence they start to get when they start lifting so appreciate that yeah. because you look amazing. And so again, hearing it from somebody that's in their fifties and being able to be like girls, she, I mean, she told you. And that's why I said, if you're a little bit subconscious about the, the barbells, the dumbbells, you don't know where to start. It's overwhelming. Machines are great. You can hide behind machine. Nobody's going to watch you on a machine. You can do, you can do some shoulder sets. You can do some arm curls on the machine. And then before you know it, it's, it's just a good transition. Before you know it, you'll be right into doing the barbells and dumbbells, but start off with the machines. If, if you are really intimidated when you walk into the gym or, or you don't have a trainer, there's lots of reasons why maybe you just are, are nervous about going to the gym, but the machines are there to help you. That's where I started with machines. Progress over perfection. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, uh, next one is, um, mood swings. Yeah. That's a killer. That, that is that it between not sleeping and the night sweats and the mood swings that pretty much wrecks a havoc on a woman's life, whether it becomes relationships, uh, your job, your family, your friends, the, the mood swings are for me, 
I was always great from day one of my period to like day 18, no problem. And then as soon as day 18 came, that's your last phase of your cycle. Yeah, the it's yeah, it's called the jumping off the bridge phase. <laughs> like you literally, if you were close to the San Francisco Bridge, that would be an option <laughs> just to end it. Cause it's just the highs and lows of it. And there's not much highs. It's just all lows. Like, but then that's your connection to like your serotonin and your dopamine. So if your ovaries aren't working right, which they're not going to because that's mother nature's way of saying, Hey babe, we're not going to make babies anymore. We're going to slow things down. And you're on the fourth quarter of your life, which is the last quarter. We're going to do it this way. And that's where it's really hard because like I said, if you had the excess estrogen, it is going to affect your thyroid. If your thyroid isn't working, then it is going to affect your serotonin and dopamine and serotonin and dopamine are your happy feel good feel good, um, and then uh, levels in your body that actually kind of coordinate how you're going to, how your mood's going to be. So if you don't have enough serotonin, well, you're not going to sleep at night. Well, how are you going to feel the next day? Pretty lousy. And you're going to take it out on people. Didn't she just explain that so good, you guys? I just love, I love when she talks. It just makes so much sense. So how do we not jump off the bridge then? What do we do? Like I said, download the app and a good thing is being aware. Like you can't go wrong with being aware of what's going on with your body. So when you look at that, the month goes by and you're not paying attention and you don't know, why am I acting this way? Like what's going on? But as long as you have that app there and you can glance at it every single day, make it a habit, just like you made it a habit getting on the scale or brushing your teeth or combing your hair, get in that habit of looking every day. Oh, it's day 12 of my cycle. Okay. I can, I can prepare for day 18. It's in six more days. Okay. This is what's going to happen. This is the way I'm going to feel. Then you can let family members, coworkers, Hey, you know what? Sorry, but it's that, I don't want to say that time of the month, but I know I'm not going to be my peak performance. I'm not going to feel very good. Or you don't have to say anything. You can just mentally prepare for yourself. Knowledge is power. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from the research I've done, there's a girl that has a cycle syncing guide and she talks a lot about the last two weeks of your cycle. And yeah. she talks about how it's your left and your right brain hemispheres literally collide, which is your analytical and your creative mind colliding, which yeah. creates this disruption. And she says a lot of it has to do with if you haven't been setting boundaries and haven't been being clear to your true heart's desires, yeah. then it's really going to flare up because you're not being true within yourself. And so that's helped me tremendously, um, especially during that time. If I cut out things like you mentioned carbohydrates, so just oh, yeah. kind of the processed carbs. But for me, it can be like that extra caffeine intake or if it's alcohol, I kind of just like around that time, I really start to wean off those things, really kick my vitamins up on full force. Uh, maybe I'll throw in a couple extra smoothies or something just to make sure that I yeah, got really dense nutrients. Really good. That's helped me tremendously. Is there anything like that? That's the other thing that I, I know it's hard but you have to be in bed between nine and 10 because between I'll say 10 because nine is really hard, but 10 at night between 10 and one and two is when your hormones are regulating the best. So they're restore, they're resetting themselves, regulating, redoing whatever they need to do in that time frame, And then from, you know, two till five, I think it's the liver and kidneys that are doing their thing. So if you're going to bed at, you know, 12 or one o'clock in the morning, um, then your hormones aren't giving that time that they need while you're sleeping to do what they need to do. Wow. And that's why a lot of women will wake up between one and two in the morning. Um, if they've gone to bed at 10, they will wake up at one and two. Their hormones have done everything they needed to do, but I don't have enough progesterone, so I'm going to wake you up. So I didn't get to finish what I needed to do in my time frame that I'm supposed to do it in. So that's how the body resets itself. So when you go to bed and you have to keep it cycled, so you have to do it seven days a week, 10 o'clock, and then wake up at the same time too. So that rhythmic, that that rhythm that you have going with your body, it's really, really important. Um, that's, order. that's yeah. really helpful because it, show, it, it tells you, okay, for, this is why, right. Yeah. That it's the extra progesterone that's happening right there. So that would be the perfect time to go and get those checked. If you are waking up 
in the middle of the night. Is that what you're explaining there? No. In order, like, are you wondering about when to get your levels checked, like progesterone and estrogen, like for blood work and whatnot? Or? Well, okay. So let's say if you are waking up every single night at that time, yeah. is that kind of when you're like, okay, things are off or do you just accept definitely that? Definitely off. No, okay. definitely off. But if you're going to like make sure when you do go get your levels checked, like uh, you want to make sure you get your estrogen checked on day 19 to 21 of your cycle. That's the only time you can get your estrogen and um, or your progesterone, sorry. So day 19 to 21 is your progesterone. Day three is estrogen. Those are the only times that you're going to get a good panel of what's going on. You can't miss the boat on those days. Uh, on those dates. But um, when it comes to waking up in the middle of the night, yeah, that's your body telling you that something's not right. and We're screaming, we need help. But that goes back to your hormones. So if your testosterone, progesterone, estrogen aren't balanced, that is going to make the thyroid not work properly. And it's not going to signal the serotonin and the dopamine to work correctly. It's going to get mixed up. So, and you might have an insulin resistance spike there as well. Uh, that that's going to wake you up saying, oh, I'm hungry at two. In the Can morning. you just be my doctor? <laughs> yeah, it's there's a lot that goes on. And yeah. That's why I say you have to be proactive with yourself. No, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to be up on my vitamins. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking into the holistic approach on all this, really focusing on fiber, uh, taking all those tests that you mentioned, definitely the app where I can kind of track everything. Um, no, this is extremely helpful. Like I already, I'm, I'm full. And it's going to change it constantly, women. Like honestly, you are going to one month you might take testosterone, um, and then the ne- next month you might be off testosterone. Yeah. But the doctor, you're not going to see the doctor, so you're going to have to really um, listen to yourself. Like even this morning, I woke up and I didn't feel the best, so I cut back my levoxathyrin in half. Because I could feel I was getting that anxiety, heart palpitations, night sweats. I was starting to feel hungry when I shouldn't feel hungry. Um, and so then I definitely knew it was something to do with my thyroid. So that's why I said, just listen to yourself. Even if the doctor says, oh, we want you 150 milliliters of, of estrogen cream. Um, and it's not working for you. And you know it's not working for you. Don't listen to them. Just you have to figure it out for yourself. You already kind of talked about uh, natural ways, whether that's um, the synthetic versus natural. You already kind of touched on that, having uh, a mix of both or kind of just obviously listening to your body. The other thing, um, you mentioned uh, bioidenticals. What's your thoughts on that? You need them. I I was really anti about that because of cancer and whatnot. But uh, from what I've learned, what I've experienced, you, you can't go, you can go without them. It's hard. Even on them, it's tricky. It's not hard. It's tricky. I don't know if I want to go hard. I'd rather go tricky. So I'd rather like get rid of a couple of the symptoms so I can get to the gym and feel good that I've, okay, now my pants fit, you know, versus maybe they don't. That feels a little bit mentally draining when your pants don't always fit. As a woman, you want to be able to, you know, fit into your clothes. That's, that's a huge thing for us. Um, but yeah, so you're you're gonna need bioidentical. You just are. I've tried both, and um, I've tried where I, I try to stay away from the estrogen. Though that's what I try and tell the ladies is, unless you're at an all time low on your blood levels, I, I just think it it's trickier to get rid of the estrogen dominance than it is to bring up the progesterone. Okay. So take the progesterone. And it'll help balance your, so if you can get your progesterone up, it will help bring down the estrogen that you have. Yeah, because estrogen dominance, when you start taking bioidentic hormones for estrogen, if you have estrogen dominance or it can create estrogen dominance, that's a lot harder to control than what the progesterone is. Next one is, um, so we have a gal looks like she had a full hysterectomy and she's currently taking estrogen. She said HRT and she said, is it possible that I would still be having menopause symptoms? Yeah. You know what? And I was thinking about that. I have a girlfriend who went through the same thing as what she did and the doctor put it on estrogen and the estrogen caused her to have all the menopause symptoms because the estrogen is such a powerful drug. It truly, truly is. That's why when we conceive and have babies, uh, the estrogen, I can't remember, is it the estrogen that's taken away and the progesterone is 
is spiked in there. And when you don't have enough progesterone, that's when you miscarry. So that's why when we have babies, we have an increase in progesterone in order for us to carry the babies. So if we have too much um, estrogen, we're going to miscarry. And the estrogen is really not our friend. Got it. It is not our friend. No, super insightful. If somebody's going to a doctor and they're putting them on just a bunch of estrogen, I mean, how yeah. how great the, to have that information. All right, well, we just want to do a little disclaimer here. Now, obviously, Teresa is not a doctor, but nope. she went through 10 years of her own struggle and she obviously has friends that she's been able to connect with. And so I just appreciate you taking the time out of your day sure. today and yep. just giving us whatever valuable information, little nuggets you guys were able to take off today, that is ultimately the goal here is to feel more in control and help manage ourselves as we go through this process. I think yeah. there's definitely some information I took and I just wanted to say thank you for that. So uh, we'll make it easy for you guys and just kind of drop down um, any of the links that she gives me as far as supplements, those vitamins she mentioned, I will throw all that down below. So make it all easy for you guys. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to say if anybody's... Anything else that you feel like maybe you've missed that you would like to add? No, but I just want to stress, listen to your bodies and don't always listen to what the doctor says and get three different types of doctors. Do the endocrinologist, do the holistic, and just uh, do the hormone doctor too. Uh, if you can find a really good hormone doctor, great. They're hard to find though. They they really are. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, and just research the heck out of everything because everybody's body is so different and that's why i said listen to yourself like know what's going on know um your sleep patterns your eating patterns you know what hormones are doing what in your body the other one that is really good to get tested is um your hgh human growth hormone level that's that's really important and um and don't don't feel bad or ashamed if you have to go on um, like steroids. It's not, it's, if it helps you and makes you feel better in the day, by all means, take the testosterone, take the HGH, estrogen, progesterone, take whatever you can do to lessen the symptoms that's making you feel the way you're doing. Even thyroid meds, you might have to go on. I think a lot of women do have to go on thyroid meds. It's just part of the snowstorm. So a lot of women are being prescribed from the doctors antidepressant. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's the old school way. And that's, again, they're only educated so much on the hormones. They take one class from what I've learned. The GPs take one class on hormones and then, you know, that's all they know. But that's the first thing they're going to say is let's get you on a birth control and let's get you on antidepressants. Stay away from birth control. Do never. I know you took birth control is probably the worst thing you can do for your bodies. So as soon as you, as soon as a doctor says, okay, let's get you on antidepressant and the birth control and then contact me in three months. We'll see how you're doing. Stay away from both of those. That is the worst thing you can do for your body. Um, then uh, ask your doctor if you can, if there's a hormone specialist that you can go to and then start your journey that way. Okay. But you can't get into the hormone specialist until you go to the GP because you have to get the referral. Okay. So, and if that GP is offended, then you find another GP and you just keep going until you find the doctor. Like I said, you might go through a slew of doctors. I left Canada to come to the US because the Canadian doctors weren't helping me there and I knew they weren't helping me. And it's a lot better here, but again, still you have to self-advocate for yourself and like I said, I'm not saying not everybody has to be on or off antidepressants. Everybody's different. But I know that the hormones and the dopamine, serotonin, and your thyroid definitely have a connection as to why um, the brain isn't working the way it's supposed to be. It's definitely all connected. And I'm not a big um, ad advocate of taking antidepressants. It's just masking the problem. Yeah. It's just putting a bandaid on. I agree with you. I had a friend that was told she was on birth control and they were trying to give her antidepressants. Yeah. And she goes, I don't feel like I'm wanting to do this. This doesn't feel right. So she went off both and now feels a lot better by just holistically managing it herself. Yeah. So double confirmation there. So thank you. I intake, uh, pretty much ashwanga is the one that would help you with the night sweats. But other than that, it's just, Again, listening to your body, one, two, one. avoiding certain one, foods two, one, two. like carbs, try and stay away from starchy carbs. It's really hard though, because when you're, I call it cycling with menopause because it is a bit of a fair. Well, there you have it, you guys. Um, hopefully there was something you learned for today. Thanks for jumping with us, Teresa. And uh, 
We'll be in touch. Um, for those that are needing a little bit of some support, if you're starving yourself, obviously don't. Um, come check us out here at Booty Bands and Barbells, and um, we'll put all the information down below. You guys have a great one. Thanks for jumping in. Bye. So if you're looking to tone up, sculpt, take control back over your body again and start feeling and looking your best, go ahead and just click the link below to jump on a call with one of our coaches. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable and stay committed to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said, that's it. I'm going to make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start you can take control again thanks booty band nation positive that you will get more sculpted more toned and you're going to love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches from where you're at no matter where you are or how long you've been in the position so just click the button below to book the call with our team